everyone, Patriot Nurse here today, and in this segment I want to talk about the care of burns. And I've tried doing a comprehensive all-in-one first, second, third degree care burn thing, and it just hasn't worked out because I always go over. So I'm going to break this down into smaller segments, the care of first degree burns, the care of second and third degree burns. So let's talk about immediate first aid. And before I, I jump into this little disclaimer, I am not responsible for your inactions or actions. Use your own discretion. Everything I tell you is for research purposes only. So, there we go. First aid for burns. Okay. What you're going to do is if you come across, let's say, little Susie, you're right next to little Susie, and little Susie puts her hands on or puts her hand on a wood stove and, oh, what have I done? What do you do then? Immediately, what you're going to do is you're going to flush the area with cool water. Not ice. Cool water. Okay. Now, the thought process, the rationale behind this is you are going to stop or slow down the spread of thermal damage to the cell, okay? Because what, you, what you're trying to do with, with the water is you're trying to cool the area down at a rate which will stonewall the heat from spreading, okay? So that's why you're going to do that. After you've cooled the affected area for about 10 to 15 minutes, then you're going to kind of assess and see where, where things are at. And by the way, the, what I'm talking about here as far as burns, both in this segment and the second segment that I'm going to do, this is for burns that are no larger than the palm of your hand in size. For a child, the palm of their hand. Anything bigger than that, and you've really got to get specialized and you're going to need some help. Okay? Because the two defining characteristics of just how, how bad really are burns is number one, their depth and their tissue involvement but also their total surface area, okay? If you've got anything bigger than the palm of your hand, then it's going to be rough and you're going to need some pretty good medical attention and you're going to need it fast. So, I'm just telling you what I anticipate most people are going to encounter in, in a survival type of situation. More burns of, of the size and magnitude that we're going to talk about. So, sunburns, they're a classic example of a first degree burn because with a first degree burn, you have the very top level of skin involvement, okay? It's just this area that I'm pinching right here, okay? That's, that's the epidermis, the very top layer, and that's what's involved with a first-degree burn. So let's say a sunburn, for instance. That's a first-degree burn. A little different than putting your hand on something hot or rubbing up against something hot, but with a sunburn, everybody knows aloe vera. It's a great thing. Aloe vera is a good thing to use because it's a skin moisturizer and it's a conditioner and it keeps the area moist and fosters an environment of healing for, for the skin. Also something to consider because sunburns hurt really bad is something like dermaplast, okay? There's dermaplast and there's also lanocaine. What these are is they're topical spray benzocaine. They're topical anesthetics and they cool the area and they make it not hurt so much. So this stuff is really good to have on hand if you can. I think lanocaine is a little bit less expensive, but what you're looking for, bottom line, is the active ingredients. Okay, look how much benzocaine and compare the benzocaine uh, to compare those between products. So Now, with the first degree burns, while you don't necessarily have broken skin, you are going to have to deal with, with some pain. So when the person has a first degree burn, another thing to consider is to go ahead and give them an NSAID like ibuprofen, aspirin, or naproxen. Caution use in aspirin in children. If they look like they have flu-like symptoms, don't give it to them because they can get what's called Rye syndrome. And that should be on the back of all aspirin bottles, but just wanted to throw that out there. The first degree burns, you're, they're not as serious from a criticality standpoint, like this person could crash, they could go down, it's not first degree burns, not so much, okay? But they are uncomfortable, especially for little kids. So your goals here are going to be, number one, maintain skin integrity. Keep the skin moist, aloe vera, foster an environment of healing, and also pain control, okay? Uh, and that's why I say, okay, well, if, 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 I could do, if I could do first aid perfectly, it would look like this for, for a wound. Let's say little Susie puts her hand on the stove and, or a curling iron or something, you know, and ow, it's burnt. Flush the area, 10 to 15 minutes, and while I'm doing this, go ahead and holler at my husband or whoever and say, hey, would you grab me a bottle of ibuprofen, okay? 
and you're going to dose pediatric doses of meds differently, but you know, you give them an appropriate dose of ibuprofen while you're cooling it. And in my head, it's like, okay, I'm going to cool it here physically, but I'm also going to get a little bit of an anti-inflammatory in her system to give me a little bit of chemical help as well in suppressing that inflammatory response and also to get ahead of the pain because if you pain is such a psychological thing that if you can go ahead and get ahead of it if you can get ahead of the pain and decrease that initial whoa factor of the pain it'll help you long term because a lot of healing folks a lot of healing is body mind it's psychological and anything that you can do to help a person have less stress and worry is going to help foster a better environment of healing okay and that includes effective management of pain so don't don't negate that another good thing to do is to go ahead and get the person's temperature uh, it's it's unlikely with a first degree burn that you're going to incur too much risk for infection but it's a good thing to do and another thing that you want to do is to give the person more protein and this is for all burns higher calorie and higher protein intake because if the body's going to have to remanufacture new tissue they're going to need adequate nutrition to do that okay so um, that that's the very basic simple type of of overview for the first degree burn uh, one side note if if it's something that looks like the skin is is kind of it's edging on that second degree burn type of look. You don't necessarily have broken skin, but it's kind of looking a little bit deeper. I would go ahead and put some, some triple antibiotic ointment on it. Now, before, before I completely sign off here, I want to go ahead and give you kind of a little test, a little litmus test to kind of see, to tell you the level of involvement of the tissue here, okay? And it's called a blanching indicator. So with, with any of the burns, after you've cooled it, what you can do is you can depress that skin, okay, and it should turn white and then the color will come back, okay. You press it, skin turns white, and then the red comes back. In a first degree burn, you are going to have that. It's going to blanch, meaning in a first degree burn, when you press that skin down, the red will go away, it'll turn white, and then it'll come back. That's blanching, okay. That's an indicator that it is a, fir a first degree burn. Blanching later on like when you press and it doesn't come back, that tells you you're edging on a more complicated second degree burn, edging towards a third degree burn. So that's just a confirmation for you just to kind of depress, okay, it didn't go as deep as it could have. Because if it was a deeper second degree burn and, and you pushed it, the white wouldn't come back. So that's just something for you. That's a little test for you to kind of figure out, okay, this it really is a first degree burn. I don't really have to worry about it, it going really deep. Uh, because I am getting a good, it is blanching, and I'm getting a good capillary refill here. So, just some things to think about. And in the next segment, I'm going to talk about the second and third degree burns, and also some non-traditional dressings for it, non-traditional uh, methods for for ensuring good burn care that are not so widely accepted in the U.S. Because we're really, you know, medical interventionalist, got to have lots of stuff and gauze, etc. Um, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some, some techniques and, and such that have, are showing really good promising results in other parts of the world. So for now, I hope that you have learned something today. I hope it's been beneficial for you, and I think that's it for me. So for now, let's Patriot Nurse signing off, and I'll see you all later. Bye.